first of all, I would to I would like to personally thank you for making this short film. It's a game changer. It uh, really is. Thank you. I don't know if that's quite settled in for me yet because it's so personal that uh, part of me is is it, I struggle. I struggle with uh, the creative side, which is like looking at this purely as a like a writer, director, producer, and then I deal with the the personal side that I, I'm the subject of this thing, and I think the the subject side of me is like, you're doing something good, this is happening. And then the filmmaker side of me is a little bit more discerning saying, uh, well, let's see how the movie does and then you'll know whether it's doing any good or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get that. So, so let's talk about how you decided to make this film for the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. This year, I, I participated in the Disability Film Challenge. This is my sixth year. And because of COVID this year and quarantine, they decided to reposition the event to an at-home event. So all of the movies this year are made in the comfort of each filmmaker's home. And uh, to make it as accessible and easy as possible, they made the genre documentary. And at the very beginning, I thought maybe I'd have to uh, not participate this year because I don't, or I should say didn't, identify as a person with a disability. But, um, and, and, and then as the event came closer and I started to really feel like a longing because I missed this event when it was supposed to happen in April. I like April was just off for me because I wasn't getting to do this annual event where I just get to mingle with a bunch of friends and make these great movies. Um, so I couldn't bear to not be a part of it. And in doing some reflecting, I realized, okay, this, this can be an opportunity for me to sort of out myself and uh, discover something that I really uh, hadn't even truly confronted or begin to accept was this diagnosis that I am now an adult with ADHD. Wow. What led you to seek uh, the diagnosis? Uh, I was having a conversation over some coffee with a friend of mine um, and I was discussing, we're, we're both writers, we were both working on screenplays and uh, and I was talking about just some of the distractions that I had and, and how it was particularly difficult for me to focus, unlike other f screenwriting friends of mine had to deal with. So, um, so I, was, I, I just got further into it and she suggested to me, do you think you have ADHD? And I was like, ah, I don't know. I mean, like, doesn't everybody, every writer talks about writer's block and having problems. But um, she said, it, you know, it wouldn't hurt. She knew a place and she said, go get tested and see what they say. And so, you know, I'm uh, in a part of my life, I'm in a stage where I'm like, yeah, let's just, you know, let's explore um, inward, not just outward. I've already backpacked across Europe. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's go inside a little bit. And I did that and the diagnosis came back that I indeed have it. Wow. So do you think that, uh, you know, your ADHD uh, may have affected your uh, work as a filmmaker? Um, it, that's one of the things that I'm still processing because okay. uh, I was diagnosed back in September of 2019. And I literally, I got the email, I read the diagnosis and I went, huh, okay. And I never looked at the email again. I didn't seek any solutions. I, I don't think I even ever talked to my friend that suggested I go get tested again about ADHD other than to say, I took the test. You were right. I have ADHD. Anyway, how's your screenplay going? Dot, dot, dot. Um, and uh, so uh, not until this documentary opportunity came around and I made the decision to sort of uh, out myself with this and start to explore what it would mean, um, did I start to learn about ADHD. So going back in time and seeing choices that I may have made or not made because of this uh, is sort of like a daily process. Things will unfold. I'll be like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Why at that time I did this or, or you know, why that particular thing worked out. The good news is this, is I feel that in the entertainment industry, um, being a, a person with ADHD, uh, kind of suits the fact that I direct because I can be really creative and I can think of solutions and I can think of ideas and I can be very spontaneous and I have this network of people around me. 
cinematographers, costume designers, grips, gaffers, production assistants, anything where I, if I'm in, if I'm in the stream of consciousness, either creating problems or solving them and I need coffee, I can turn to someone and someone will help. So there's a, there's a magic that I've fallen into a, a career path here that lends itself to having ADHD, but that's also to be followed up with the fact uh, it doesn't make my life any easier. You know, it's, there's always going to be challenges. Yeah. How do you take care of those challenges? Do you have to have list, you know, what helps you the best? Um, I have a lot of different ways. I've got, here's one stack of post-its that I have. Um, I have a whole bunch of other ones down here on the ground. I have sometimes, so I have a printer right here and I'll just pull out uh, pages that I use for notes. And then, you know, a good day is a day where I've written everything down and I've been able to cross stuff out and I get to throw the piece of paper away that Corey gets a pat on the back for one of those days. Um, so there's lists. I have lists in my phone, um, reminders in my phone for things. Um, and then I would say one of the biggest sort of shifts that um, I accidentally fell into was uh, in January of 2019, a friend of mine recommended uh, Transcendental Meditation. So I went and I got my mantra and I try to do that practice twice a day for 20 minutes. And so I meditate. I have a regular meditation practice that I try to uphold every day. And that's really helped out because I start my day with meditation. Like I wake up and my brain is just like, go. <laughs> and so I roll out of bed. I take our quarantine puppy for a walk. I come back inside and I sit and meditate for 20 minutes. Wow. And then in the middle of the day, when my brain is like, you've been going for eight hours, crash. I go and I meditate for 20 minutes and I get a little bit of energy back and some clarity. And some meditations are easier than others. Some are very hard, but uh, I found that to be super beneficial. Wow. That's like uh, really got a, a lot of great advice. Um, I wanted to get back to your film. Um, so what was it like to like turn, I see in the film where you turn the camera on yourself and what was that like? What was going through your mind that moment? Um, I literally was in Corey director producer mode up to that yeah. moment. It was like, I knew the camera angles that I wanted. I knew what I was trying to do. Um, I had a camera operator in my house that had the mask on. We were doing all of the CDC sort of stuff to make sure everything was good. Luckily he had just, you know, been tested and was COVID free. And so there were no concerns about that. And, and we were setting up cameras and we were talking about everything. And then we said, and then we're going to have the interview. And I said, great, great, great. And then I sat down and it just kind of hit when you watch the beginning of the movie. <laughs> I, that, I think that's the very first take where I sit down and I just take this big breath in and let out this yeah. sigh. And I think if you look close enough at my face, you can actually see my eyes say, oh, shit. <laughs> like, excuse my French, but right. it settled in right in that moment where it was like, I'm not just making a movie. I'm in the movie. This is a movie about me. Yeah. And so from that moment forward, um, there was a constant battle between the artist and the uh the subject of uh, that was beginning this journey of self-discovery of really starting to take stock of these emotions and, and feelings and come to terms with what this means to be an adult with adhd Whew. so when will the film be well when will we be able to see it uh, the viewers uh so it's part of the easter seals disability film challenge uh all of the, the, which i think i heard that maybe 70 films were made this year or submitted wow. mine is one of that plethora okay. um and uh they all are released tomorrow july 25th um they all go live at uh the disabilityfilmchallenge.com or the easter seals disability film challenge uh youtube page you'll be okay. able to see them all as well as mine um okay. And uh, there's a week long promotion that starts tomorrow where everybody's going to be going out and encouraging you to see their films. There's always, I mean, like, of course, watch mine. It's great. Yeah. It's personal to share me. It. Yeah. Uh, watch it, share it, like it, all that good stuff. Um, 
but there's a lot of other good movies that are there. And there's, I mean, I've just made some dear, dear friends over the years of participating in this event. Um, they have a whole variety of, of things going on in their lives. So you get to see stories of people with cerebral palsy or Down syndrome or amputees or limb differences, learning disabilities, autism. It's, it's such a wonderful event to just like expose yourself to, um, to new things that aren't properly represented in media these days. Well, what else do you have to say about your, your movie? Um, you know, there's, there's two things I'd kind of like to wrap up with. One is um, the takeaway. And, uh, you know, I, when you get to a chance to watch the movie, I really tried to pack as many talking points in a creative way as possible into the film. Um, you know, but if there's one thing I want people to consider when watching it is that, um, and all the other disability film challenge movies that are made is that I want them to recognize our own individual biases uh, around the stigma of disabilities, whether it's a visible, invisible, physical, mental, learning disability, everything. I think all of us do, can do a service to ourselves to just check ourselves and, and look into those things. Because the problem with me, or the problem I see with able-bodied people or entitled people is that they lack the ability to reflect on these things. Um, and it's not necessarily their own individual fault. I see it as a big part of uh, it, like just our society, you know, that the American way of life that we see in marketing in radio and television and film and books is that we celebrate the successful able-bodied and often white uh, heroes and pioneers. Um, and so our, our, our society encourages us to celebrate this particular type of body, this you know, particular type of intelligence, uh, status, income, I I any of that sort of stuff. So it leaves really no room for progress for people that aren't born with those things. Um, and it gives a, a nice leg up to uh, people that are born into it. So it do and that doesn't matter about your, your sex, your race, your sexual identity, religion, your background, any of that stuff. So that's sort of the takeaway. If, if people could get a little glimmer of that and, um, and maybe like talk it out with their spouse or their friend or their parent or whatever and, and just start to recognize those things, I think we can start to change some of the things that, uh, that are going sideways. Um, the last thing, the thing that I would like to, uh, you know, if I could dream, like if this, if this movie could be like a, a, a red pill or a blue pill, like in the matrix and they pick the pill and this is, this would be the solution. What would happen is just to, you know, if you think about all of the people with invisible disabilities, and that includes like ADHD, anxiety, depression, bipolar, autism, diabetes, even like all of these sorts of things, mental illnesses, um, and people without or with disabilities that like that are visible visible disabilities. Everybody wants to find success in their lifetime. We all we want that. That's what we're raised that we want success and we want to fit in. And fitting in mean, means that we appear perfect. Um, and since our society isn't viewing disability as a part of perfection, um, these people with invisible disabilities are sometimes unconsciously encouraged to hide their disabilities um, because then we have we can have the appearance of perfection and whether that's to get the job get the raise get the girl or or get the grade in class like that's a lot of extra stress that people with invisibilities have to carry that nobody talks about because if we talk about it it's out in the open so the irony with all of this for me is that when you talk about those people I mentioned before that are successfully and, and outwardly in our society appear perfect, I've heard podcasts, I've met people, so many of them will readily say, I'm not perfect. I have to work hard. You know, you think Kamal Nanjiani was born with that ripping body he got now that he's playing a superhero? Hell no, that guy goes to the gym for four hours a day and lives off of like salmon and brown rice. Blech. You know, yeah. but he looks amazing, you know? So um, yeah. the fact is, is that they have to work really hard to stand out. And if the, the irony is that these people that want to achieve, that they want to achieve some sort of perfection, they want to stand out. So they want to fit in, but yet they want to be different. 
And to me, that's just an oxymoron. It's a conundrum. It's a paradox. So the real answer, and this is the solution, to me at least, is if we can start to um, accept everybody for who they are uh, and stop picking out the differences, but start seeking out the similarities, um, we can start to have a systemic change. And, and this sounds like it might be like poof, a huge cultural revolution, but to me, at, it's not. At its very core, it's what everybody's always asked for from the American dream. Yes. And so it's not that big a deal. It just requires a little bit of effort from us all. Bravo. That was so well said. Wow, it's been an honor to be able to speak to you. And I just wish you best of luck. You got my vote. It's an amazing <laughs> film. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> I'll Thanks. make sure to share it with our readers and viewers to, uh, to check that out um, yeah. tomorrow. And vote, 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 share, share, share. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. You know, uh, I don't even think I said the name of the movie. <laughs> Come on. Hi Hyperactive. The name of the movie is Hyperactive. Go see Hyperactive. Um, there you go, hyperactive. <laughs>